Welcome back to another FPL video. This will be the best wildcard team for Blank Gaming 18. We've had yet another key asset in FPL getting an injury or a knock during the Tuesday Carabao Cup game. So I'll be talking about that and discussing the implications on this best wildcard team and talking about what we should do with that particular asset. And also Pau Torres, who I've discussed extensively this week, he's got a knock and we don't know much about that injury. So that could also be a concern. I'll discuss possible alternatives to him if you want that Aston Villa defender. And I'll cover much more, such as how to navigate AFCON and the Asian Cup from gimmick 21 up until gimmick 24, depending on how far those respective countries go in those competitions. Smash the like button of this video. Our aim is to get this to over 200. And we're also 50, 60 subscribers away from 22,000. And that is our big aim by the end of the year. Without further ado, let's jump straight into this video. I don't trust Newcastle away from home. We've talked about their away versus home record this season extensively. But in home matches, I think Dubravka could be a very safe and sound option. And he's also very cheap. So if you want a budget goalkeeper, Ariola may have lost his spot after he picked up that wrist injury and Fabianski came in and did a decent job in the Premier League. Now, what happens today on the Wednesday between Liverpool versus West Ham could give us a big insight into that Ariola situation. If he starts against Liverpool, then it looks very likely that Ariola would have been demoted, so to speak, to the cup goalkeeper, whilst Fabianski would then become the main one and he will start all the league matches. So it all depends really on what we get from that lineup. But if Ariola starts that, then you would assume he's going to be benched in blank gimmick 18. Then you look at other alternative budget goalkeepers. Turner isn't offering anything secure and he's putting in some poor performances. Nuno Spirito Santo is now the new manager for Nottingham Forest and he might have a different perspective on the goalkeeper situation and go straight back to Vlako Dimos. So Turner is not safe in my opinion and even if he does start, I don't trust Nottingham Forest defensively. So I think Dubravka is the best of a relatively bad bunch but I think Dubravka is actually quite decent at that price point. But the main goalkeeper I think that you really want to go for at the moment is Bern Leno and of course you do have Alison Becker and Raya who I'd also highly recommend and I think those four goalkeepers overall the two on screen and obviously those two from the top clubs I think those are the four best goalkeepers in FPL right now and David Raya is a very secure long-term option so you can go for him as well but Bern Leno I think is very good for bonus points and saves especially if Fulham win or draw in a narrow game and they keep a clean sheet as well he has a great chance of getting seven to nine points very easily so for me these are two of the best goalkeepers in FPR at the moment and they don't cost that much overall Amongst Arsenal defenders, I think only Sinchenko comes close to Saliba. And even then, Sinchenko is far from nailed on once the likes of Tomiyasu, Timber return from injury. And also, there's a few other things to take into account. For the time being, Sinchenko is absolutely fine because Timber is going to be out until January or February. And with Tomiyasu, he is heading off to the Asian Cup very soon, shortly after he returns from injury himself. So Sinchenko could be your best way into the Arsenal defence for bonus points and assists. But I think Saliba is just that safe secure option long term he's going to play pretty much every single minute and so far this season he's one of the only players in the entire Premier League who have done so you might be anticipating a rest at some stage because he probably needs it and he also played in the Champions League a dead rubber game against PSV Eindhoven but Saliba is integral to how Arsenal play he's one of the best defenders in the world at such a young age and his potential is through the roof now the second defender I'm going for is a fan's favorite in FPL and he's now got the most points amongst defenders it's a very close battle between him and Kieran Trippier but Trent Alexander-Arnold is winning that at this moment in time and I have to say he has been phenomenal in recent weeks he's outscoring the likes of Salah, Erling Haaland with ease and he's an 8.2 million defender so he offers tremendous value when he's in this rich vein of form and I think he's the best Liverpool asset at this moment in time especially with Salah heading off to the African Cup of Nations in gimmick 21. Now the third defender I'm going to go for is a bit of a tricky one because he does have a knock at this moment in time and that's Pau Torres if he is ruled out or if he's still a bit of a doubt for this blank gimmick 18 fixture you can go for Consa or Diego Carlos instead if you really want that Aston Villa defender you might also be thinking what about Alex Moreno Luca Dean I think there's going to be rotation between those two Matty Cash is far from nailed on and I would expect him to be benched in blank gimmick 18 and in most matches from now until the end of the season unless something changes so for me Pau Torres is the most nailed on I think Constance only played one less minute so you can also go for him but Pau Torres offers more bonus points potential and goal threat than the Frenchman 
Ultimately though, either one is absolutely fine and Konza is 0.2 million cheaper and Diego Carlos is priced at 4.4 million. So they're all worth mentioning for sure. Now the fourth defender I'm gonna go for is Tarkovsky. My favorite Everton asset is Mikalenko, but he's still doubtful and we don't know the full extent of that injury. Sean Dyche was quite optimistic heading into the game week 17 deadline, but in the end, Mikalenko missed out and now we just have no idea when he's gonna come back. So Tarkovsky could be the best way to replace him. And to be fair, another option in goal would be Pickford, who has been phenomenal since game week eight. He had a terrible start to the season. I kept saying to avoid him in the summer. It looked like I was right. But then as the season evolved, he has become one of the best goalkeepers in FPL. And that's four clean sheets on the bounce for Everton. But it is Tottenham away next. I don't think that'll be the case. Tarkovsky would be a bench option this week. But in the future, you could easily start him in most game weeks. Now, the fifth and final defender is is Pedro Porro. I'm kind of sick of saying his name. People are laughing at the way I say it in Spanish, but there you go. He is a phenomenal asset, I have to say. The underlying metrics, the attacking potential, he's just exciting to watch because apart from Trent and Trippier, I think Pedro Porro offers the most attacking threat of any defender. There might not be many clean sheets for Spurs, but the bonus points and the assists will certainly be there for Pedro Porro, and I think he's a great option in the next couple of months, and the same goes for the rest of the defence. Originally, I was going to go for Gordon instead of Saka, but Gordon picked up yet another knock during that game against Chelsea in the Carabao Cup. And Eddie Howe said, the type of tackle you don't want to see, taking one of our attacking players out of the game. Again, he's very sore at the minute. He took a nasty knock. And this was in reference to Moises Caicedo's challenge on Anthony Gordon within the first two minutes of that match. It was a very foul challenge. It should have been a red card. And Anthony Gordon now is a doubt for blank game week 18 he could finally get his rest and then he'll be back fairly soon but on the wild card i think i would skip him for now i still think he's a good option by the way and if he's clear before the deadline then fair enough go for him i think he's a good option long term and amongst budget midfielders i think only cole palmer can really rival him but saka for me is still a phenomenal option he's only blanked four times this season if i'm not mistaken and only once at home he's so consistent yes he's blanked two times on the trot and that's very surprising and some people are considering to sell him but once Son and Salah go off to their respective cup competitions for their countries, who are you going to go to? Sack will be one of the first names there in terms of replacements. And with the fixtures coming up for Arsenal long term, I think Saka is just a great option, a set and forget choice in the midfield. And I wouldn't sell him at this moment in time. Now, the second midfielder I'm going to go for is Mohamed Salah. I know he's heading off to the African Cup of Nations in Gimmick 21, and he could be a sell in Gimmick 20, but I still think it's worth having him for Gimmicks 18 and 19. He's a great captaincy option in both weeks, especially in Gimmick 19, and I wouldn't look past the Egyptian if possible. Between Gimmicks 21 and probably 24, he will be unavailable, and once he comes back, we'll all be clamoring to get the Egyptian back into our team, but I think Salah is still a great choice on the wild card, and for the next two game weeks, he's worth it. You can sell him in Gimmick 20 or 21. Now, Cole Palmer is a set and forget option really in the long term. Chelsea have great fixtures for the next month or so, and he is instrumental in everything Chelsea do. And he's now starting to add goals from open play, which is something I kept asking for. And he's doing it now, and he's getting the assist. So I think Palmer is a sustainable option, and he is absolutely game breaking value at the moment around 5.4 million. Now, the fourth midfielder I'm going to go for is Jared Bowen. Now, people are going to be clamoring for Kudus and also Lucas. Paqueta, but Kudus is heading off to the African Cup of Nations and we already have two players who are involved in the Asian Cup and the African Cup of Nations there. So I would skip Kudus for now and I'd rather go for Jared Bowen as a safe set and forget option for the next couple of months. And once Kudus returns from his international duties with Ghana, I think Kudus could even be added on top of Bowen and you can go for that double up in the midfield or you could even replace Bowen to Kudus and gain a bit more money that way. But the fifth and final midfielder I'm gonna go for, and this might be controversial, is Hyun Ming Son, a bit like Salah, for the next two to three game weeks, he's one of the best options in the game period, and I would want to cover him, and I think you can still sell him in Gimmick 21, and with the situation with Salah and Son, if I had to sell one of them first, it probably would be Salah based on the fixtures, because in Gimmick 20, Salah plays Newcastle at home, while Son plays against Bournemouth at home, and Son has a great record against the Cherries, but ultimately both of them would be sales around Gimmick 21, and you'd try to have them back once they return from their international competitions. But if you don't want to go with either Salah or Son and you want replacements now to not book in too many transfers, I would consider Richarlison 
Odegaard, and there's a few other midfielders popping about, even Anthony Gordon, if he's available. I think those three would be great choices to replace Son and Salah. And also, for those of you that don't have him already, I think Jared Bowen is a great replacement for those two options. And the same goes for Saka, who is extremely consistent, to say the least. So that's the five-man midfield. You're covering multiple teams, some of the top teams in the country as well. And of course, the only doubts or problems would be Salah and Son in game 21. Once again on the wild card, I'm recommending going for a budget striker in Semenyo. You can also go for Archer, Muniz or Mabama, but I think Semenyo and Archer are the best and probably in that order as well. So not much needs to be discussed. They're facilitators and enablers and you can go for an eight-man attack, but you will have benching headaches. So if you can stomach that, then fine, absolutely go for it. But it could be an issue, of course, in certain gimmicks and you will have some bench points and you might be regretting not playing the bench boost as well. But the two strikers are very simple. Ollie Watkins at home to Sheffield United and good long-term fixtures. One of the most consistent players in the league this season. And Aston Villa could go top with a win against the Blades on Friday. So I think Watkins is a very simple option. Probably the best captaincy choice on paper in Blank Gimmick 18. So don't look past Holly Watkins. If you don't have him already, buy him back this week, that's for sure. And the final forward I'm going to go for is also a very underrated pick. And I've kind of been dismissing him a little bit earlier this season, but it's very difficult to ignore him right now. I might even buy him in my own team. Check out my team selection video to see what my plans are. But Solanke is looking like a great choice in the forward line. And once Erling Haaland comes back, you could buy him for Solanke or even for Semenya, but that would require downgrades elsewhere. And I think you can go about Erling Haaland in gimmick 19 when he faces Everton away. And then you'd want him back for gimmick 20 when Man City plays Sheffield United at home. And they could still have a double gimmick, although it's very unlikely at this moment in time. And you can buy Erling Haaland back by downgrading Salah or Hyun Ming Son. And you can go to the likes of Gordon, Odegaard, Richarlison or any other midfielder that maybe you're very interested in. I think another one that is very underrated at this moment in time is Pedro Neto because he should be back in the squad in the next game against Chelsea. And then around gimmick 19 or 20, we can start to see Pedro Neto starting matches. My only concern with Pedro Neto is his injury record, but he is still one of the joint top assisters, I think, in the Premier League. If not, he's just behind that. And his creativity, the dribbling, he's just a fun player to watch. And he's been Wolves' best asset this season alongside Huang Hee Chan. And obviously with him going off to the Asian Cup with South Korea, I think Pedro Neto will take more of the attacking responsibilities there for Wolverhampton Wanderers. So I think Pedro Neto could also be a good shout to replace Salah or Son around gimmick 21. And that would give you the funds to buy Erling Haaland back in the forward line whilst maintaining the likes of Trent Alexander-Arnold in the back. Let's now head over to FPL.team, talk about the starting 11 for blank gimmick 18, the captaincy, and also iron out a few other details that need to be addressed. Both goalkeepers are solid for blank gimmick 18 on paper, but I would go for Burn Leno at home to Burnley, and the back three would be Trent Alexander-Arnold, Pedro Borro, and Pau Torres. The midfield five would be Son, Saka, Bowen, Palmer, and Salah, and the front line would be Watkins and Solanke. The bench is also Dubravka, Semenyo, Tarkovsky, and William Saliba. So I think that's a very solid team overall. There might be a few issues this week. Jared Bowen facing Man United. You've also got Saka and Trent with that little clash. But overall, I think that's a very solid team. Ollie Watkins will be the captain and Hugh Ming Son the vice, just like I discussed in my best free hit team video. Be sure to check that out because that can help you with your free hit teams and also with your free transfers to maybe find those one week punts for Blank Gimmick 18. And like I said earlier, if you don't want to book in too many transfers, you can go for the likes of Richarlison in for Salah or Son. And if Gordon is available, you can go for him for one of those options. But I think for the next two or three game weeks, I would still have Son and Salah, and then you can sell them around gimmick 20 or 21. Now, the predicted points for this team is 59.6. That isn't particularly high. I think the free hit had around 62 to 63, but things change and evolve all the time. And I've got 1.2 million in the bank with this 15-man squad. And I think some of you with even more money in the bank could make even bigger upgrades in certain positions. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it or found it useful, then be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new. Let's try to get this video to a 200 likes and let's keep on pushing towards 22,000 subscribers and beyond. We are 50 away from that milestone. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram, DylanRCM, and check all the links in the description below for the Patreon, Championships Discord server, 
the FPL League, and also Draft Time, which I discuss in detail in the team selection video. I wish you all the best of luck for Blank Gemic 18 and the rest of the season, and I'll see you next time.